All too often, when the gifts of nature are removed, they are lost forever. However, there are a few instances where we are able to reclaim our lost treasures and set right an outdoor wrong. Such is the case with a reclaimed creek in the northeast town of Dorchester. Once an Iowa City author and illustrator duo learned of all the efforts taken to restore this lost waterway, they decided it would be the perfect lesson to teach children about valuing our natural resources. I am always looking for a good story. And one morning, I opened the Cedar Rapids Gazette and I read about this man in Northeast Iowa, Mike Osterholm, who had bought a property, realized there was a buried creek on that property and determined to restore it. And the article was at the end of that process when he had just learned that he had restored it so successfully that brook trout could live and reproduce in that creek without help. So it was a big celebration of the successful restoration. And I love that story. From the moment I read it with my breakfast coffee, I thought, I want to write about this for kids. And I had known Claudia for years, and I knew what a wonderful illustrator she was. In fact, I had some prints of hers, and I thought, I want to write the story, and I want Claudia to illustrate it. And I don't know, Claudia, if I called you that very day, but it was quite soon after that that close. I called and said, I found this story. Are you interested? And I had the impassioned email from Jackie. And I think also when I met with you, you had that look in your eye that said, I know I am going to illustrate this book. So <laughs> I already knew Jackie's writing style and knew that the landscape would be captured and the whole story would be captured in such a beautiful way that it would be so easy to translate it to illustrations. And, and just look at it, I'm surrounding right now all these beautiful birds and hills and all the things I knew the story would be part of. I think I loved it so much, the story that is, that I didn't even think, is this going to be good for kids? It's like what I love in a story is the tension of somebody wants to do this. Can they do it? Will it happen? What are the problems? Mike wanted to restore this creek, and his neighbors said, you can't do that. The water will just sink into the ground. Well, Mike had already said to us, it was as if the water remembered. And that was such a wonderful quote that we just felt like we had to use it. Bringing something back that was gone, finding something that was lost, is appealing to all of us. And that notion that one person can make a huge difference is good for all of us too. Well, I knew I would love interpreting all the natural history aspects of the story, but um, the part of the story that was a, a little bit nerve-wracking to begin with that I knew would be uh, something I would have to illustrate are the big machines, but we also know that children love to look and see big machines, excavators and bulldozers, and it turns out that I was just telling Jackie, she's sometimes not with me if I do a story time, and. There's always a children that's a bit wayward in their seats and then all of a sudden the big machines come in and their attention snaps right too. So different aspects of the book, you know, are, can be illuminated by the illustration in that way. And I have to mention one thing that I love every piece of Claudia's illustrations, but I really love how she put little bits of information on a blade of grass or on a tree trunk. And I think that's there for kids to find. It doesn't hit them over the head, <laughs> but it's there for them to find. And I, and I really love how you did that, Claudia. Well, thank you.
It's very organic. You start with a very thin board that has a layer of white clay underneath and black ink on the top. You take a very sharp instrument and you scratch out what you want white and leave what you want black. It's a medium that's very sensual. You can hear it, you can see it, you can feel it. It just calls to me for some reason. Well, I think the final lines are very vibrant. They bring a lot of energy. It almost kind of glows with an energy. You know, there are lines that are created by the scritchy, scratchy marks that I make. And that's what life is, you know. If we were to walk around as scratch boards, we would see the little scritchy, scratchy marks of, you know, how we're walking and moving and being, you know, in the world. Well, I do think that children's books are a pathway to nature in some ways. If you have a good nonfiction natural history book, they're going to read that at night with you. And the next morning, they're going to say, you know, hey, let's take a walk and maybe we can find a bobcat. I mean, how perfect would that be? There was a, a playwright, Horton Foote, who said, but you don't find stories, stories find you. And I think that's the same with nature, that you may, might not know nature, but nature knows you and keeps pulling you. I would say, yes, there's, there's nothing I'd rather be doing. This is a story of stewardship, of taking care of. And anybody, anywhere, can find something to take care of. If it moves me in a way, I, my hope is that it will move children, just through the authenticity. Oh gosh, those are gorgeous. Yeah, with the story, it's there for them to, to find as well, revealed over the page turns. And I think that the creek is the same way for children. They find it. They find it themselves.